Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Minis. Today, we're on the last issue of the pre Alan Moore Saga of Swamp Thing. So uh, that's issue number 19 of the 80 Saga of Swamp Thing run. And uh, first things first, we got the cover here. Swamp Thing is fighting a spider-bodied Anton Arcane. And uh, by spider-bodied, I mean like his back half of his body. He looks kind of like a centaur, but if the legs weren't of a horse, uh, or like the legs and body weren't of a horse, it's of a spider. Um, and then his face is all fucked up like it was before. Um, like when he just had like kind of a Frankenstein-ish body. Um, and he's got human hands and a human torso. So very interesting design. Very creepy design too. I kind of wish they had like kept this for longer because <laughs> it just seems creepier. I hate spiders. So, And then we see uh, while Swamp Thing is fighting him on the cover, uh, Abby Arcane, who is Anton's uh, niece, is being taken away by some creepy looking insectoid and unmen. So pretty good cover. Um, like we said, this, this is like the last one right before Alan Moore takes over. Um, it's still written by Martin Pasco. The cover was by, uh, Tom Yeats and, but this one also is co-written, I believe by Ben Totalben, uh, as well as drawn by him. So, uh, they're trying, they're really trying to set up, like just close off all the loose ends of the characters that had been going on in this, uh, little 19 issue pre-run. And setting it up for Alan Moore. So that's why Abby just shows up randomly two, uh, two issues before with Matt. And Matt's got this issue because they're like, let's get rid of him. Let's get rid of these, these people. So they're like setting up for what Alan Moore wants to do. And so we start right off, uh, right back when where the issue, last issue ended. So Matt Cable is just realizing that, oh wait, all the things that uh, are these apparitions that have been attacking him and his friends, these like giant floating jellyfish brain things and everything, they are actually from him because he's uh, drunk and he had some electroshock therapy that like fucked him up from the government trying to like wash his brain of everything that happened in the 70s run of Swamp Thing. Um, and so... Uh, that's what's been going on. He's been trying to like drink his problems away because of, of the electroshock therapy, but that has only made these forms in his mind become more and more real because he thought they were just like in his imagination, but it turns out they weren't, they're just getting more powerful. So he runs outside as he realizes, Oh, I can control these things. And uh swamp thing is like on fire. The whole area around him is on fire. Abby's passed out. Um, so he, uh, create now that he knows he can kind of create his own monsters and stuff he actually makes a monster to wake swamp thing up that's like a big tree monster and it's like and it kind of looks like an ent or something from lord of the rings like a small ent um and swamp thing like thinks it's gonna attack him and so like he punches it away but then it, it actually wakes him up enough to for him to realize oh shit the world's on or like the the place around me is on fire i have to put it out so he doesn't have time to get water or anything. He's like, look, I, I got a mossy, damp body. Uh, let me just lay on top of uh, Abby in this area and put it out myself. So he does that, and it's like, oh, man, it's sizzling and all this stuff. Uh, it smells disgusting, he says, but, you know, it does the job. And so uh, they, they end up, you know, being okay. Uh, Abby's scared, but uh, now Swamp Thing's like, what's, what's going on? And... Um, Matt Cable's like, look, uh, I got to tell you about this, this, uh, shock treatment I had. It seemed like this is what the issue is. Um, something screwing, screwy is going on inside my brain. Uh, I'm only just understanding it, you know, myself. So he's going to like tell them about what happened with, uh, Dr. Barclay giving him shock treatment when Dr. Barclay worked for the government and he thought he did. Um, and then we see Liz Tremaine and, um, Dr. Barclay are in their, their truck and they've been trying this whole time going, they've been trying to go back to the motel that they were at cause they have their medical bag. And so he's actually explains what's going on. Instead of Matt Cable explaining the swamp thing, we actually cut to Dr. Barclay 
which uh, the conversation basically just continues from what Di- from what Matt Cable is saying. Dr. Barclay explains exactly what happened, why they uh, administered electroshock, and basically he was just following orders from his uh, supervisors uh, because you know he had like the wrong charts and everything. So he thought he was just doing what he's supposed to do uh, per the patient's uh, medical records, uh, but that was not the case. So then. Um, then like you know talks about him like being you know in a, in, a, in a loony bin for a while which kind of messed with his mind too um and then we cut to uh arcane he is now on that fly uh, or like dragonfly looking helicopter thing he has dr k tied and upside down and he's like are you ready for the metamorphosis doctor and uh, then we cut out we see this issue is called and the meek shall inherit um, like I said, it's written by, uh, or co-written by, um, or co-plotted, I should say, by, um, Martin Pasco and Stephen Bissett, uh, who was also the penciler, uh, and then John Total Ben's the inker. So, uh, that's why this issue really feels like an Alan Moore issue, uh, minus the, like, good writing and stuff, but, <laughs> but yeah, so we see all these horrific creatures, and, uh, Anton Arcane has, has got all his unmen that, like, I guess there's some unmen that are, uh cocooning uh dr k and when they're done with him he will turn into one of them and uh he will forever be a slave to anton arcane as some creepy fucking bug creature and he does not want that um and so uh then we see and, and this is like a correction from my i guess my misunderstanding of the reading of that issue from last week that was kind of a filler um but there was you know, he said like well what happened last time in the cemetery like how did you get out and he's like i don't know but basically what happened was and i just misread this or it didn't make sense 100 percent was the uh the unmen actually got possessed by the slave spirits and they tore anton arcane into seven pieces the head being in the middle grave that said arcane that's taller and then the six other pieces of his body being around in those in those other graves so it wasn't as unmen in those other graves it was just it was just uh just his body so um he doesn't know exactly what happened but it seems like his uh unmen basically the ones that were with him like scattered uh originally when they were with the slaves and they got possessed and they're like oh what's going on and then there was other ones that like came to find him later and when they found him you know he was all pieced out and everything um and still alive i guess i mean they don't really say <laughs> like not alive alive but i guess his spirit was hanging around still or something and so they were able to um give him a new body which they he says uh and using the science i had taught them uh rebuilt my artificial body this time even less well than they had before in time i forged this exoskeleton to enable me to function so they gave him an even shittier body than the time before and he used that shitty body now that he was actually alive to build this like half insect body this like half spider centaur body so um so he's telling dr k all this stuff and then we see uh his technology is actually pretty badass he has in his ship He's got these like uh, wormholes or whatever that kind of make his ship bigger than it appears. So he's got all these like spots that he can walk through. Um, like instead of doors, it's like a it's like a black blob on this on the page, and then he can like go through it, and it's like a whole other giant room. So I guess it makes it so the inside of the ship is bigger than the outside of the ship, which is ridiculous. And so um, he is now approaching uh, the cabin with uh, Abby and matt cable and swamp thing and matt cable's telling him a little bit more of the backstory of what he went through when he got out of the insane asylum basically they did like a brainwashing concoction to uh make sure they were trying to find out what what took like if the the electrotherapy took and what actually took like he remembered everything they didn't want him to remember but he didn't remember like how to become or how why he was like a cocksure agent and stuff so like he basically lost all his like agent skills uh like he forgot how to do that but he remembered like oh yeah there's a swamp monster and stuff so so it didn't work too well uh but it made it so it was like he's unable to have a job or you know <laughs> do mo- very, very basic things like he was an idiot now and uh he couldn't even like 
uh, keep like it shows him like he was a janitor, a security guard, you know, just these kind of basic uh, night jobs and stuff uh, that he couldn't keep because he just lost like his ability to to uh, like remember things and stuff. So um, that is why one of the reasons he says why he turned to like drinking and stuff. And, um, and then we see uh, Doctor Barclay and Liz, and it doesn't really say why, but they're like stopped in the dark and basically. Uh, they're arguing because she's Liz is saying like we can't go further it's too dark we can't see anything and it looks like they're like pulled off the road or something like either they went off the road somehow or they just pulled over because they're lost or something and then uh, she's like we can't go on it's too dark we have to wait till daybreak and he's like no what if what if Abby's uh, needs like what if her, her condition requires treatment and like I have to do something and it's my fault and you know, like I, I, I might as well have just killed him. And he's talking about Matt Cable and feeling bad about it and stuff. And then um, we see uh, we cut back to the cabin, and uh, Doctor Arcane, who's flying over, is like fire. And the guy, the Matt Cable and Abby and Swamp Thing, are like, do you hear a noise? And then they look up and they see this giant, like dragonfly helicopter. Um, and it's coming down and Swamp Thing runs to like fight it or whatever. And it shoots Matt Cable in the head and like basically knocks him out. And then, uh, another bug like flies down to snag Abby and it's like a giant like fly or whatever it grabs her. And then he looks up and he sees like this cocoon hanging off the side of the ship. And I don't know how he knows, but he's like, Dr. Crittman, how, do, how, what's, what's going on? Like, and he knows he's inside of that thing. So I'm um, not exactly sure how he knows, but he does. So Swamp Thing gets, uh, he starts fighting all these uh, moth men and fly people and stuff that are attacking him, all these insects. And one of them is like a giant wasp, but it's stabbing him and it stabs some poison into him and it knocks him out. So they actually are able to take him because he can't move. He becomes like uh, paralyzed. And so then we cut back to uh, uh, Dr. Barclay and Liz and they're, yes, still sitting there. <laughs> and uh, he's like, no, I have to do it. Like, what kind of what kind of doctor am I? And she's like, um, don't talk to me about self-respect, Dennis. This is about your ego, yours. You have to prove to yourself that you're such a great healer. Uh, all you doctors are alike. You've got a God complex. Uh, well, if you care about human life so much, doctor, care about mine. He's like, of course, Liz, you know how I feel. And we know from before that, like, Dr. Barkley had this huge crush on her. They almost got together. And then she was like, you know what? I'm not feeling it. Never mind. So she kind of blocked him on that. And then, but now she's scared and cold and afraid. And she wants Do Dennis to listen to him. And she goes, she turns on her feminine wiles. And <laughs> she's like, I'm cold, Dennis, cold and afraid. Stay with me, please. And I'll make you glad you did. So she's like, if you stay with me, I will fuck you. <laughs> and he's like, Oh my God, Liz, how could you do this? You know, you know how long I've wanted this, dreamed about this. And this is like the cheesiest line ever. She says, <laughs> like she's throwing it on thick. She's just basically like telling him, if you stay with me and do what I want, I will fuck you. So she says, I can do something for your ego that a hundred miracle cures couldn't give you. Um, and so he's like, he's like, no, I, I've dreamed about this, but I, not this way. I, I don't want to, uh, not, not having to give up so much for it, but I will because, <laughs> because I can't, he says, uh, I can't fight it. You win. Uh, he's totally, he can't do anything. He's, he's got a, he's, he's, you know, he, he needs some love and apparently he's a horny man and, uh, she has been out of his grasp and now she's giving herself to him and he cannot withstand. So, uh, she's <laughs> It was a great scene. I thought she just like, you know what? Why don't you? Why don't I just fuck you if you stay here? And she, he's like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, totally, no problem. Our friends, they're dying, whatever. So, so we cut back to Swamp Thing, who's now on the ship, and he's like in a spider web hanging, and uh, you know, of course, Anton's like explaining his whole plan. Uh, once again, the plan is to switch bodies with Swamp Thing. That's all he's ever wanted. He just wanted Swamp Thing's big, strong grassy body and so um and then but he's, he's also pissed about uh his daughter or his niece being you know on uh like fighting against him so he's gonna like just turn her into uh 
uh, bug bug unmen person as well, just to just to be uh, a dick, I guess. So uh, as Swamp Thing's watching, they, the cocoon unmen start like putting silk or whatever around her to make a cocoon, and then we see Doctor Crippman uh, or Doctor K, who's like eating out of his now. He's like fully metamorphosized, I guess, and so he's gone through his metamorphosis. He is a butterfly or ugly bee or something. He <laughs> he comes out and uh, he is ugly as fuck. So um, then you know, Doctor K or Doctor uh, uh, Anton Arcane is like like now like he has his his machine all hooked up. He's ready to transfer the body, and he's like. Um, like you're, and, and look at your friends, they're all going to die and ha ha ha, I won. And he pushes that button and Dr. K, who's now like a horrible mix mash bug, you know, B slash fly person or whatever. He comes out and he is like, no. And I love this. It says, um, uh, he says, not quite yet. Not quite. Not while a man's mind is still his own. They're talking about Dr. K. He like flops out of his cocoon because he like chewed through the the uh, the the silk and says uh, it inches across the deck. This half human thing, a small struggling spark of fear and faith, faith that there is a God to judge it, and a fear of what sentence that judge may pronounce. So he's still worried about you know uh, everything he did in the Holocaust, but he has to save his friend. Uh, and he said. One last good work, and perhaps there should be clemency. So if he gives his life for his friend, maybe God will spare him. And uh, atonement. With his last breath, the grotesque hybrid creature propels itself forward into what would have been the exact uh, focus of the mind exchange. And so uh, the I guess there was like a beam that was going to go between Anton Arcane and Swamp Thing. And he, this uh, hybrid, ugly fly uh, B, uh, Dr. K just like flies right into the middle of that beam as Dr. Arcane's consciousness was about to go into Swamp Things. Swamp Thing had not yet started yet, I guess. So, um, and it fries everything. It says, uh, the energies unleashed instantly reduce the bug thing to a microscopic handful of ash. So Dr. K is dead. Uh, energies which hurl Arcane backward into a bank of mysterious machinery. There is the crack and sizzle of circuit shorting trapped in the body of an insect. Uh, Dr. K dies as a man. So, um, and then we, we see, uh, it says arcane, however, is something far less at the moment of his expiration. So he's die He dies. Uh, and he is not a man or anything. Uh, what is left? It says is the mindless, lifeless Hulk that, uh, of metal uh, exoskeleton that is not even a thing of human flesh. So we see most of the skin and everything that Anton Arcane had under his body was actually just like a uh, a metal skeleton too. So he's basically like a cyborg or a robot uh, with a spider body. And he's completely fried. So he's dead. Um, his like eyes popped out. He's all goopy and stuff. Um, and so the unmen start to converge on him and then uh swamp is like well, fuck this and he bursts out of his uh webs he's like a little groggy but he, he's like nothing's wrong with me and so he's, he saves uh, abby you know he's able to pull her out of uh the weird like silk cocoon that had started um and then he's like oh shit we gotta find <laughs> we gotta find out which like wormhole we gotta go through in the ship and every time they go through a wormhole uh they're like, they run into more unmen and he just is like beating the shit out of them and killing them. He's like, normally I hold back, but like this time we don't have time. I just have to get Abby and me out of here. So he's like punching holes through these guys' heads and everything. Uh, but he can't find his way out. And then he picks one up and he throws it and, uh, it just shatters one of the, I guess the eye of the, uh, of the, uh, bug helicopter. That's kind of on autopilot, I guess. And so uh, he picks that one of one of the young men up. He throws it at him at the window, or he doesn't realize it's a window. He just throws it at the wall, and it shatters. So he, now they can see where they're at. And he's like, "Look, we have to jump. That's our only uh, recourse." And then it says, "This is one of the creepy lines." Uh, it, he cuts back to the ship a little bit, and it's like, like all the unmen that are insects, they go back and they eat uh, Doctor Arcane. So they literally like eat him alive. 
because they're all like, I don't know, insects now more than humans or something. So they're like, they have no further use for him other than disposing of their leader. And so they eat him, uh, Swamp Thing and Abby jump and they land into a body of water. And, um, and now they're like, come on, let's go. We have to get out of here. Uh, but first we have to like get Matt and we have to find our other friends and stuff. And then Swamp Thing's like, no, wait, I have to go see the body. Like I cannot leave. Um, like I can't leave it like this. Cause I've basically left it twice where I thought he was dead and he wasn't. So now I need to see his body. So he's like, you go back to the cabin. I'll go see his body. And we'll head. And then I'll head back up to you. So now we see the next issue is called loose ends. It's going to be the first Alan Moore issue. And uh, it's about Swamp Thing apparently going to make sure Anton is fucking dead. So that's all for the pre-Alan uh, Moore Swamp Thing run by Martin Pasco. And it, was, it was interesting. I'm glad we read it. Uh, it was a little long in parts and very uh, dense uh, with the story. But, uh, you know, it was, it was fun. It was, it was good like, uh, okay, now I kind of understand some of the things happening. I know for a fact the uh, the town that got flooded, I believe it was Riverside, I think it is, or River something. The, the town that got flooded um, by the vampires, they come back, I know, in the, in the Alan Moore run. So that was cool to see. So there's some little Easter eggs that we get that I didn't know appeared before the, the Alan Moore run. And so, um, so yeah, if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at plain strains of comic books, all one word at gmail.com. And until next time, stay swampy. Oh, 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 oh,